Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about combined structural and thermal loading. So, if you have seen my previous videos on steady state thermal and structural, static structural, you see that in static structural, I don't have too much tools for applying thermal condition other than just one temperature. And in thermal condition, I do not have much of uh, mechanical uh, loading or fixtures or uh, boundary conditions. So in real world, most of your structures are subjected to both. So if I want to combine, how do I do that? And the answer is here, I have a steady state thermal analysis on the L-beam where I could apply everything I want from tem temperature, from convection, from heat flow of insulation, right? And I could get the temperature distribution and so on. So now on the top of that, I want to add some fixtures, the two end of it, and I want to apply some physical load as well. So what is going to be the total result? Or let's say if I just uh, fix the two ends and apply temperature, you know, because the structure cannot move, it is going to create thermal stress in the object, even without mechanical loading. So what is going to be that uh, stress? Can I see the stress? Clearly in the steady state thermal, you see there is no tool for stress, right? So how can I do that? This is the way. So here is my steady state thermal. And now I grab my static structural. And instead of just uh, dropping it here and making it independent from this uh, thermal, this is what I do. I bring it and then I, if I just uh, put it on the first three before I release my mouse, if I bring my mouse over the first three, it means what? It means the structural is going to share the geometry, the engineering data, and the model of what? Of the thermal. If I bring it over also to the solution, means the results of the solution of thermal is going to be affecting the result of the structural, which is what I want. I want to combine. I don't want two independent ones. So instead of releasing it on the first three, I release it onto the solution. And now I let my mouse go. And clearly you see that now the geometries are shared, the models are shared, the engineering data is shared, and the solution of this is going to go to the setup of the static structural. So now double click on the static structural, and if you do that, now you see what? In my tree, not only I have the steady thermal, steady state thermal, I also have a static structural. So now I can go ahead and insert, let's say, two fixed geometries at this end and uh, the other end, right? So I apply them and that's enough for me to create a thermal uh, stress in the mechanical object, right? Because the object cannot move. So if I want, I can go here and say insert for me stress uh, equivalent and also uh, create for me the total deformation. And now I can solve for um, static structural which is affected by the thermal so now you should definitely see stress if you don't it means there is no connection between the two and now look guess what actually i have a lot of stress here 218 megapascal it's almost passing its yield strength of 210 so just that temperature condition is enough to make this guy yield right and have plastic deformation and you can see that here the two ends are fixed but the huge amount of temperature that i put on this end i insulated the other ends and uh, uh subjected uh, some other faces to um uh, heat convection was enough for me to have this object just yield under simply thermal stress now here you see that the object is bulging so if I can apply some pressure on the top and the bottom face, maybe I can cancel some of this thermal stress, right? So let's go ahead in the static structural and add some pressure on the top face as well add something on the bottom face. 
and let's say I want like I don't know point two megapascal or something like that, right? And see if adding pressure on the top and the bottom is gonna make a difference. So basically, keep those top and the bottom parts, the flanges, in place by applying pressure to kind of cancel the effect of temperature. Not cancel, I mean counteract. So here, you see, still, I'm at 218. And these corners are still subjected to, basically, uh, a lot of stress and the material still going to what? Now, it might not be as uh, basically as uh, moving upward as much as possible, but you clearly can see that, right? These areas are not moving too much, but the back of it does here. This back is clearly trying to bulge out, right? So the best thing is to add fixtures if we can right and see what happens so um, here instead of the pressure I'm going to apply the fix support and uh, try to fix see what happens if I also fix these two faces right what's gonna happen here and uh, solve it again And look at the stress now, it is a little bit better. It's 193, but the back of it is bulging big time. Look at that. See, because the back can bulge, right? You have fixed so many faces and you have a lot of temperature gradients, so now the back is bulging. So ideally, you want to what? You want to go to here and then uh, apply to that face as well. And let me one more time solve it see what happens right try to fix that area as well and now the front is bulging of course because this area has the room to uh, basically uh, expand what i'm doing right now is i added a fixed support here separately and i added another fixed support here separately and I want to measure how much force is applied to this back plate or this front plate as a result of trying to keep the structure fixed due to, uh, although I have a lot of temperature uh, gradients applied, so I fix those. And what I will do is go to the solution, insert, go to the probe, and I want the force reaction at the boundary condition three, which is this uh, back here, right? And I solve for it and um, here if I look at the force reaction, you see that the force reaction is actually big. If you look at this force is 7.17 million Newton. The Y force is not negligible, negative 18,000, and the Z force is almost zero, right? So, yeah, that is a lot of force, and this is what you can see that is ruining this material here, right? As you can see from the side view, that is, of course, this is not true scale. If you go true scale, it's not going to be that bad, but clearly you're going to have a lot of stress, right, in these areas, in these corners that are not limited in terms of fixture or anything, and they can go internally up to 192, which is close to the yield. So this was the combination of a thermal and static analysis, and as I said here, the solution of thermal is going to affect the setup of structural and you can see that here under static structural when we started before we even do any of these fixed supports we already have this guy imported load a6 right which is directly coming from the solution of what the thermal a6 so this imported load clearly would tell you that there is thermal loading on this and because of fixture it is going to have what structural stress even if we don't apply any force or anything. 
So hopefully this video was useful to you. I will see you in my next video. Thanks.